Greetings, everybody. This is Robert William Marshall, Waco Masonic Lodge and the Kansas Lodge of Research. Uh, I'm here with uh, the host and founder of Historical Light, Brother Alex G. Powers of Gardner Lodge. You forget who I was? <laughs> I was trying to come up with some kind of a smart aleck uh, play on words to do, and, and I just nothing came to me. I was, I was trying to come up with something for what the G stands for. Green beans, man. Masonry is in my name. <laughs> How you doing tonight, brother? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good, man. Well, we had to make a last minute run there to the mother-in-law's house and uh, just barely got back here in time. I, well, not quite. Running a couple minutes late. Um, pulling up the live stream now, so hopefully we see some comments coming through. But uh, what were you up to today, man? How was your day? Good day. Uh, uh, pretty relaxing. I uh, had some uh, at home dim sum. Uh, fiance went over to the uh, Chinese import grocery store at the army base down the road and uh, I got some, uh, I can't think of what they're called, uh, but uh, red beans inside the puffs and chicken and they're, they're really delicious. If you ever been to a dim sum restaurant, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, some pot stickers, a few other things, uh, made some Thai tea. Uh, and then we went for a long walk on, across the land and along the, the creek and then the railroad tracks. Found a couple of uh, railroad spikes and a circular iron piece. I'm not sure what it is yet. And uh, incidentally, that's actually the, uh, the uh, part of my driveway it used to be a railroad track uh, for the uh, Missouri uh, the Katy Railroad, which uh, Katy was a nickname that came from MKT, Missouri, Kansas, Texas. It was a railroad that went uh, from Texas to, to Kansas and Missouri. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, pretty good day. Uh, had a good time. Went for a walk with the lamb, the chihuahua, and the fiance. Very cool. <laughs> I like how the lamb was included in that walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the lamb likes going for walks. Yeah, that's cool about the uh, the railroad. So uh, we were at, you know, big deal here in Kansas City is Union Station, which was the old train station. They still run some Amtrak out of there, um, but they got a lot of different displays and stuff in there. Uh, we were up there not too long ago and in their main hall where it used to actually connect to the little uh, train ports. Um, one of the last ones down there it still has the call name, the, the time the train was leaving and everything. It was headed to Waco. I sat up there. Oh, and, nice. I think I may That's have seen a cool. picture of that a while back, but caught my attention. I was like, hey, it's going to Robert. Yeah, that's that's cool. And then, I mean, it literally would have been because, like I said, uh, uh, the, the perimeter yeah. of my property used to be the, the Katy Railroad uh, train track. They actually had just around the corner from here uh, back in the day. Uh, it was opened in like 1924, 1925. Uh, they had a train service station where uh, train mechanics could uh, work on all the, the train carts. It was so big that trains could pull into it and there were cranes that came down from the ceiling and picked up the train carts and rotated them around to however wow. the mechanics work on them. Pretty cool. That is cool, man. Very neat. So that railroad that, uh, or the tracks by your house, are they still in service or are they just kind of abandoned at this point? Uh, so there is a train track uh, that, that is one part of the perimeter that is still in service uh, off the top of my, I don't know if it's the, the St. Louis uh, or what it is, uh, but uh, the, there, there used to be a, a round track that split off from it, which was, as I said, for the, uh, the Katy, uh, they actually, they uh, decommissioned that track line and removed the track line and left the gravel. Uh, and my, that's, that's what's my driveway now. That's awesome, man. Very cool. Well, yeah, we spent another uh, day full outside. Uh, we put in a garden in the backyard. Uh, we'll kind of upgrade it. We had one uh, last Elevator. couple of years, but it was, uh, we'll upgrade it. Uh, it's it's oh. a box garden, so it is a little bit elevated. Um, but we had a smaller one just outside the mason room window for the last couple of years, and uh, we moved this one over just off the patio and made it substantially larger. So 
apparently I got sunburnt like you wouldn't believe. I, I didn't realize until I was leaving mother-in-law's house and uh, you move your head the wrong way. It's like, holy crap, my neck is tender. So that's going to be awesome showering in the morning. Good stuff. That's I mean, what are, yeah, well, it's always something. So what are you toasting with tonight, my brother? You still have your crystal head there? Uh, it's it's here. It's always here. Uh, here's the crystal head. Or nice. one of them. Uh, I think I've gone through four of them, I think, doing these toasts. Uh, but uh, I'm actually uh, sipping on uh, almost the last of my red maple uh whiskey pot distillery pot my red maple pot distilled whiskey from the there we go the red eagle distillery in uh ohio uh, i've been nice. to lodge just around the corner from there and uh, this was uh brought to me as a gift from uh brother john michael gillaspie uh who is the junior warden of my uh lodge yeah right on good stuff and you are looking very bright tonight it's got that light there and everything awesome yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I've heard rumors that uh, there are those who think I'm too dark, so I'm trying to balance out with them why. Well, you look rather illuminated this evening, brother, so <laughs> looking good. <laughs> Let's see. Tonight, I'm working through some more of this uh, everlasting powers whiskey, and uh, we're going to be using uh, the Patrick Craddock glass once again. But I think, my brother, you said uh, you have something to share with us this evening, uh, some historical oh. value, possibly? Uh, sure. Uh, let's see. I've got some stuff to share here. Uh, so this is the uh, traveling apron case that was gifted to me by another officer of my watch, Dave McCown. Uh, it's got my name plaque on it there. It's lockable. Uh, and I carry a few things in it. Uh, ordinarily, it's actually much emptier than it uh, was before the pandemic because I've been taking things in and out of it periodically. Uh, I've got my copy or one of my copies of uh, Jewel P. Lightfoot's uh, manual, which I've read from for an earlier toast on this series. Nice. Uh, I'm trying to remember now what it was I read about. Uh, I don't remember which section of the commentaries, but Whitefoot's commentaries covers all kinds of things, Egyptian symbolism and the 24 inch gauge and common gavel and what have you. Uh, I've also got uh, my uh, DDGM apron uh, for this year that uh, was supposed to get a lot more use than it has because of the shutdown. Uh, right. And uh, I'm thinking somewhere it has mentioned on it that it, uh, oh no, it wasn't. It wasn't the apron, it's uh, our ties in Texas this year as DDGMs came from Craddock. Uh, my ties upstairs, I don't have that to show. Uh, and I uh, also have a copy of uh, my lodge's history. Uh, this has my uh, white leather gloves, uh, but this will be the history item I'm sharing. So, when I became a Mason, uh, I told the guys at my lodge that uh, I was a history major at Baylor, and they're like, oh, you're a history guy. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I've, I've been reading this book, uh, Morals and Dogma, and they said, oh, don't bother reading that. You'll never be able to, which turned out to not be true. Uh, but uh, they said, uh, we've got a book you, you can read. And so they went to the lodge office and uh, charged me $100 for a copy of this. Uh, little did I know that I could have gotten it for like 20 bucks on eBay. But uh, <laughs> That's how it usually goes. Yeah, it's a century of fraternity. Uh, the history of Waco Lodge, number 92, from 1852 to 1952. Uh, it's got uh, quite a bit of info in it. It was written by uh, Roger Conger, this copy. Uh, is not the one I bought from the lodge. This is one I got on eBay and uh, it's signed by Roger Conger. He was a past master of the lodge, Mr. Waco history. He helped create the National Historic Landmark uh, Association and a number of other really important things to uh, local, state, and national uh, history. I met Roger when I was uh, 
uh, very young, uh, on my great grandmother's coffee table, there was a book about the history of Waco, which was another book that Roger wrote. And uh, she knew Roger from uh, years and years of uh, living in Waco. Uh, and I, as, as like a four year old kid, loved this book with all these old photos of Waco. And I used to make her take me places so I could see what it looked like. And, uh, so she took me out to meet Roger, and at that time he was very old uh, and sick, and he died only a year or two later, but I did get to meet him, uh, and he's always been an idol of mine. Uh, I did take home the copy of the book uh, that the Lodge sold me, and I used that to uh, uh, begin the research that uh, makes up most of my uh, uh, Waco Masonic History database on the wacomasonic.org page. Uh, it now has uh, about 200 uh, complete biographies uh, of early Waco Masons. Uh, yeah, birth, so fantastic. Birth You've got a lot of good work on there. And uh, it was uh, originally and primarily inspired by this book and meeting Roger when I was a kid. So uh, that's what I have. That's fantastic, man. Great share. Sorry, I've got our <laughs> up here that apparently wants to be a special guest this evening. She will not get off of me. That's okay. I like dogs. If she was asleep, then I'd be worried. Right. Do you know why? Art history? What's a sleeping dog? It's a sign that your faith has uh, gotten lost or is broken. Oh. Yeah. If you ever seen a Renaissance painting, uh, there, there's a dog sleeping at the feet of a uh, main figure in the painting. That I've seen that a few times, yeah. Something's wrong with their faith. Interesting. That I did not know. Very, very cool. Well, that was a great share, man. We appreciate you sharing that with us. Let's see. We are upon the nine o'clock hour. What should we toast to tonight, brother? Do you, you got a toast in mind? I don't. All right. Well, let's just keep it with the traditional toast, brothers, as it is upon 9 p.m. with us. We truly, truly appreciate. Actually, you know what? Let's switch it up. I want to toast to you guys. Um, because you guys have been phenomenal in uh, our path and in the growth of historical light and everything we do. And we really appreciate you guys joining in with us night after night after night. Day 40, I believe, today. Um, and that's, that's just phenomenal. So you guys mean the world to us. And uh, we really appreciate you uh, helping us continue this mission. So to all of our historical light followers, we salute to you. Cheers, my brothers. Cheers to the followers. Fantastic. Well, yeah, we've got a lot of people joining in with us this evening. We've got some uh, bunch of comments rolling through. I wasn't able to keep up with them as well with uh, my dog licking me to death over here. But make sure you uh, drop a comment. Even after the show here, we love to hear from you guys, and we'll make sure to reply back. Uh, let us know what you guys were up to this weekend with quarantine and how everything's going on your end. And know that we will be back tomorrow evening at 845 Central Standard again. Go and chat with the brothers, share a little bit more history, and of course, end it off with a 9 p.m. toast. So until then, be well, stay safe, and please take a little time to save history. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>